Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Coach Matt Ellis, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching the video today. If you haven't done so already, like I say at the beginning of all my videos, make sure to go right down below and click that red subscribe button and also make sure to click that notification bell to receive all of our future videos as notifications. That way you don't miss out and you get great little bits of info like the one I'm coming at you with today. All right, so today we are interrupting our regularly scheduled programming to answer a question from an email that came in from a guy named Heath. Now this one is pretty cool because his name is Heath and he is a seventh grade student at Center Grove Middle School, Cent Center Grove Middle School Central, that's a tough one, in Greenwood, Indiana. He says that in his LA class, he's working on a project called Genius Hour. I'll try not to hurt my shoulder patting myself on the back here, genius hour. And for this project, they are asked to choose a topic that they are passionate about. The component of the project is seeking a mentor who can help answer questions about the topic that they choose. So he reached out to me and basically his question for his genius hour is, how can I spin in the discus to throw farther? Now that is, that's a big question. That's the question that everybody wants to know is how do I throw farther? How do you do the spin correctly? How's this all work? What are the secrets? Tell me how to do it. But he asked some other questions. Basically, some of the questions that he had regarding this project is what is the proper technique for spinning? Um, how far should he stand in the ring? And how do you get maximum distance in your throw? So that's what we are gonna be doing today for Heath. It's a great question. I love when things like this come in. I interrupt everything to answer these questions. So Heath, this one is for you. All right, now the first part of this question is kind of the tough one. This is the big one. And the question is, what is the proper technique for spinning? So there's a lot of answers to this. So I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple and as basic as possible. When you throw a discus, you are standing in a circle. It's eight feet, two and a half inches uh, diameter. And that's from the front of the circle to the back of the circle, eight feet, two and a half inches. And your goal is to throw that discus, basically a giant Frisbee, and have it land in the middle of a throwing sector. All right, so that throwing sector is 34.92 degrees. It's a very random number, but it's there for a reason. And essentially, you have to get it to sit in that sector. It's like a letter V that goes all the way out and the discus has to land. The tricky part is you start in the back of the circle. So here's one of your feet and here's the other one of your feet. You start in the back of the circle looking the opposite direction. So your back is actually to the throwing area. And then what you have to do is you have to spin in that circle. You have to rotate in that circle, turn around, run down that circle, and throw that discus as far as possible. So here's how you do it. The way that I heard this best explained was by a, a former thrower, a uh, former Olympian named Andy Bloom. And Andy was a elite level discus thrower in the US. And the way that he explained it is pretty simple. He said, it's not really a spin. You don't spin around, jump in the air, twirl around like a, like a dancer or like someone doing ballet where you jump in the air spinning, the ra spinning around or like a figure skater spinning around in the middle of the ice. What you want to do is it's basically you turn, sprint, turn, and throw. So you're going to pivot on this left foot if you're right-handed and your right foot's going to come all the way around and then you're going to run to the middle of the circle. So that right foot's gonna come all the way around and you're gonna run to the middle of that circle. From there, you're gonna pivot on that right foot and then your left foot is gonna come around and be at the front of the circle. And at this point, you're now facing the back of the circle again. So you turn and look down the throwing area and then you turn and look out the back of the circle, and then finally you turn and let the discus fly. Now, when you draw it like this 
on a whiteboard, it looks really hard to understand. So that's why I'm glad that you put the second question in there, which is how far away in the circle are you supposed to stand? Okay, now the second part of Heath's question is where should he stand in the ring? So as you can see here at my gym, I have a kind of a weird looking circle. It's a shot put circle, which is a little bit smaller inside of a discus circle. Now we've got the shot put toe board, which is bolted down, but just for the sake of this video to demonstrate, I'm gonna leave that shot put toe board in there. You don't use a toe board for the discus. It's basically just a big circle that's painted on the ground. Now, when you start your throw, you wanna start in the back of the circle. You wanna use or utilize as much of the circle as you possibly can. Now, for younger, newer throwers, they don't start all the way in the back. They kind of start somewhere, maybe a foot, foot and a half off the back of the circle. I'm gonna show you why in a second. So basically, there are four parts to taking a discus throw. There is the release or the standing throw portion at the end where you throw the discus down that throwing sector. There's the middle part where you turn, so it looks like this. You turn and then you throw down that throwing sector. There is a portion which we call the South African. South African is where you start in the back of the circle here and then you run, pivot, and throw. So run, pivot, throw. And then there's the full technique, which starts in the back. Now this is where you turn, run, pivot, and throw. Or you can think of it like Andy Bloom said, pivot, run, pivot, throw. So you start in the back, and without putting your foot down outside the circle, you pivot, run, pivot, throw. So there's a lot of moving parts to something like this. You can think of it almost like uh, swinging a baseball bat, swinging a softball bat, swinging a golf club, uh, hitting a tennis ball, whatever it might be, other sports that you know or other sports that you've played, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of moving parts. But where you wanna stand, you wanna stand in the back of the circle to start that full throw. And the goal is when you're driving to the front of the circle, when you're running to the front, you wanna have your feet about as far apart as they would be as if you were gonna jump in the air as high as possible. So if I'm gonna jump in the air as high as possible, I'm gonna have my legs right about here. I'm not gonna have my feet really close together. I'm not gonna have my feet really wide apart. I'm not gonna be able to jump in the air really high if my feet look like that. If I were to walk around and someone just told me to jump as high as possible, my feet would be right about here. So when I set up in the front, that's about where I'm gonna place my feet because that's how my body knows or that's where my body knows to place my feet if I wanna make the most amount of power possible. I don't wanna be really wide and I don't wanna be really narrow. So when you drive out of the back, that's about where you want your right foot to hit. Right there, just inside the front half of the circle. So that's what it's all about. You start in the back, okay? Pivot, run, pivot, throw. Pivot, run, pivot, throw. All right, and the last part of Heath's question is, again, one of those that is very, very easy to get lost in the minutia, in the teeny, tiny, kind of small things that make coaches coaches. But what we get away from a lot of times is that there's a pretty easy way to explain how to throw something farther. So he asks, how do I get maximum distance in my throw? So how do you get maximum distance in your throw? Really what it comes down to is the release velocity. Now, what the heck is release velocity? Listen, I am the farthest thing from a physics professor or a science teacher, okay? I like, I know the human body inside and out. You talk to me about training, weight training, strength training, coaching, body positions, biomechanics. I'll be able to give you an answer. But when it comes to physics and math-based science, I'm not my best suit. So I'm going to try to explain this the best way possible to keep it simple for everybody watching this video. All right, so release velocity. Essentially, release velocity is the speed at which you release the discus. 
So you want to throw that discus as fast as you possibly can because velocity is essentially a relationship between speed and direction, okay? So what you wanna do is think about combining those two things. You wanna throw that discus as fast as you possibly can. You wanna release that discus out of your hand as fast as you possibly can, and you wanna throw it in the correct direction because if you threw that discus as fast as you possibly could, if you released it as fast as you possibly could and threw it straight up in the air, it's not really gonna go anywhere. And if you release that discus as fast as you possibly can and you throw it straight down into the ground, it's not gonna go anywhere. You have to release that discus extremely fast and it has to be released at the correct angle. Now, the proper release angle but from most objects it's probably like something around a 45 degree angle, okay? But with something like discus, because it is a heavier object and it's a more dense object, and because of sort of the, the shape of the discus being that it is more like a UFO or like a wing, you've got other things that come into play that we're not really gonna get into in this video because it's just gonna turn into a really boring physics lesson, you wanna release it about a 35 to 40 degree angle. All right, so when you think about throwing, I don't want you to really think of it like a math problem or think of it like a physics equation. What I want you to think of is that you are a human being. Your job as a discus thrower is to throw that discus with as much speed in the correct direction as possible. And your goal is to try to optimize and maximize your body and your strength and your technique in the circle to get that discus moving as quickly as possible and release that discus at the proper angle. Everything else that goes into throwing a discus all builds into that equation. Your form and technique. Your form and technique allows you to go faster if the form and technique is correct. Your footwork, the placement of your feet in the circle, allow you to keep your balance, allow you to produce more force, allow your body to move in the correct direction. So everything that you do in the circle is meant to get you eventually to throw that discus as fast as you possibly can with as much release velocity as you can possibly generate and getting that high release velocity to go at the correct release angle. Everything that you do from the time that you step in that circle to begin your throw to the time that you release that discus after you throw needs to be done in a manner with proper form and technique with lots and lots and lots of practice, decades of practice, strength training in the gym, getting your body bigger, getting your body stronger, working the form and technique, becoming faster, becoming more explosive so that you can generate as much speed as possible to throw that discus as far as you possibly can. All right, I hope that makes sense. So to everybody out there watching and especially to you, Heath, Thank you so much for sending in that question. I love doing videos like this, answering questions, breaking this down to put it in a way that's easy to understand without majoring in the minors, without that paralysis by analysis where you overthink everything and you start focusing on those tiny little points of the throw and you lose track of the big stuff. And this is what matters is the big stuff. The form and technique in the circle, where you put your feet, and how fast you can actually release that discus, that's what actually matters. That's why we do the technique that we do. That's why the form exists the way that it does right now, is to get us to throw farther. So Heath, thank you so much for, answering, for asking that question. I hope this answer is a good one for you. If anybody else out there has any other questions, comments, whatever it is, please leave it in the comment section down below. Also make sure to go visit EliteThrowsCoaching.com 
where we have the weight training programs, we have the video analysis, the online coaching, and the local coaching, everything on there that's gonna help you out to become a better thrower. So thanks again, Heath. Anybody out there has any other questions, please let me know and I will answer it in a future video. Thank you.